I'll do a right spin first. Here she goes. In a right spin, there is a continuous oscillation. A slight rudder buffet is present. Procedure for recovery completely normal. No trouble getting out of the spin. Probably try one to the left now. For three turns, an oscillation is present as in the right spin. Then the spin becomes stable. Recovery is the same. Full opposite rudder, then stick in neutral. Going into a sustained side slip. Couldn't hold it. I'll do another. The plane will not hold a sustained side slip. The aileron control is insufficient to hold it on a side slipping angle. The ship automatically tends to straighten out. However, it will side slip long enough to avoid enemy fire. What about prohibitive maneuvers? The usual limitations? Right. No snap rolls, inverted spins, or outside loops. Hello, Bob. How about some aerobatics? Roger. Here's a loop. cruise, this airplane will even do a loop or immelman from level flight position. the external fuel tanks or bombs installed, acrobatic maneuvers are prohibited. Also, every pilot should be warned not to fly inverted for more than 10 seconds. In that position, the scavenger pump fails to operate and oil pressure drops. Going to buzz the field, field, Colonel. Why don't you watch this for speed? Here he comes. That was beautiful, Bob. Thanks, Colonel. I'll show you her gliding characteristics. I'll make a glide approach before landing. Right. Let's move over to where we can watch them come around. You show me your power off glide first. The ship is designed so it can glide any safe speed down to a margin of about 25% above stalling speed. With the gear and flaps up, the glide is fairly flat. The nose being high makes forward visibility poor. Now, uh, if you lower either the landing gear or the flaps or both, you greatly steepen the gliding angle and increase the rate of descent. Hello, Mine Star. This is Army 115. Request landing instructions. Over. Hello, Army 115. This is Mine Tower. You're clear to land, Bob. Use runway 25. Over. Roger. Roger. Up. Making normal pre landing cockpit check. Checking that fuel selector in on fullest tanks. Propeller control at 2,500 RPM. This setting gives a margin to apply power in case of a bad landing and helps prevent the engine from over revving. There's a tendency to do that due to the flat position of the blades and lack of the pitch control mechanism. Mixer control and auto rich. 
oil and coolant radiator scoops in automatic. Lower the landing gear only below 170 indicated. By pushing landing gear handle in down position, make sure it's securely snapped so vibration won't jiggle it up. Adjust power and trim to maintain 150 indicated. When the airplane has been brought into the wind for landing, the flap should be lowered fully. But be sure the indicated is below 165. As soon as I turn into the field, I maintain gliding speed of around 115 with a normal whirl. With a full load, including auxiliary ferrying tanks, the gliding speed is between 125 and 130. Adjust the trim tab to assist in landing. landing gear and the lockable tail wheel make it safe, but as you know, never use more than half flaps. Well, let's go down to the line and talk to Bob. Thank you. Well, how'd you like it, Colonel? Nice show, Bob. Mr. Dietz, I think we've got something. Thank you, sir. Nice landing, Bob. But tell me, what happens if you make a bad one, if you bounce her in? Do you give her the gun and bring her around again, or do you just ease it in? Well, if the attempt at landing is badly made so that the wing drops or you get a bad bounce, go around again. But don't slam the throttle open, because if you're too near stalling speed, engine torque will drive you right into the ground. You should ease the power on, get the nose down, and go around again. If at the last moment you decide not to make a landing, ease the throttle open, and when you reach an airspeed of about 110, and an altitude of about 300 feet, raise the flaps by degree, a notch at a time, after raising landing gear. Uh, tell me, what about engine failure during flight? Engine failure during flight. Pull the emergency release handle of the cockpit enclosure so you won't be trapped inside in case it jams on landing. Lean forward when you do because the hatch might clip you on the ear. Drop your external fuel tanks. And if this time, lower the flaps. But remember, you've got to do it by hand because your hydraulic pressure is gone. Keep your landing gear retracted and land on the belly of the ship. It's no tea party, but you shouldn't have too much trouble. Oh, uh, one more thing. Get away from the ship as quickly as possible because the cockpit can get a little warm in case a fire starts. Tell me, how does she behave on scramble takeoffs? Oh, same as any other fighter. If she isn't warm, the oil has to be diluted enough to ensure proper oil pressure at moderate power. Then, as soon as the engine will take the throttle, just taxi out and take off. But apply the throttle slowly and steadily. Sudden application, as in any takeoff, causes the engine to cough and spin. How'd you like me to check you out on it, Major? What are we waiting for? Excuse me, Colonel. Gentlemen, that's the Army's improved version of the Mustang a stronger, longer-range Mustang for high-altitude fighting. And today, thousands more are being made by workers on the production line for you on the fighting line.